This is Mac OS Ken. Much ado about discounts. Apple may be the top smartphone seller in the world. And a plan to avoid the Apple Watch ban. It is Tuesday, the 16th of January, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Coda. You're all in one collaborative workspace. Get started for free and get a thousand dollar credit at coda.io/slash macOS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com/slash macOS can. Practically, though not completely unheard of, a piece from Apple Insider says Apple is offering discounts on iPhone for Lunar New Year sales and celebration in China. Not just iPhone, though iPhone is what's getting the headlines. A piece from Mac Rumors on the sale says Macs, iPads, AirPods, and Apple Watch models are also seeing price reductions. Those are said to be smaller than the 500 yuan, roughly $70 US discount, seen on communicators from iPhone 13 through iPhone 15 Pro Max. Mac Rumor says Apple's discounts are notable because the company does not typically offer promotions on its website around Lunar New Year, usually leaving promotions to Apple authorized resellers instead. That said, we may be looking at a new normal for Apple and sales, and the Middle Kingdom. The Apple Insider piece points out that this is basically the same sale Apple ran last year in China for Lunar New Year. Meanwhile, the piece says deals for both were small compared to last summer's 618 shopping holiday. That saw the company slash $210 US off the price of iPhone 14 Pro, according to the report. Now, there is one bit of weirdness in all of this. The Lunar New Year promotion outlined by both reports runs the 18th of January through the 21st. The Lunar New Year holiday is not until the 10th of February. Not surprisingly, both the Apple Insider piece and the Mac Rumors report mention increased competition for iPhone in China this year. That is largely due to the return of Huawei to the mix with the Mate 60, though the Apple Insider piece also mentions the on-and-off talk of a ban of iPhone in certain segments of the Chinese government. None of that sounds like great news for iPhone, though there was a positive note Monday from TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. He hit medium yesterday with a note on lens maker Largan, since Largan makes lenses for iPhone, the Post had projections for Apple's communicator. The way the analyst sees it, iPhone 15 Pro Max will still account for 40 to 45% of iPhone 15 shipments in the first half of this year. So even if unit sales fall, it sounds like average sales prices will stay high. We shall see. As for the actual point of Ming-Chi Kuo's note, if Largan is your jam, there is reason to celebrate no matter who wins between Apple and Huawei. Just like with the iPhone 15 Pro Max ASP, the analyst says the higher price for lenses for that device is more than enough to offset any iPhone sales lost to Huawei. And besides, Largan is also Huawei's main lens supplier, according to the Post. And now something crazy. Monday night, Apple Insider ran a piece that had Apple beating Samsung globally in terms of smartphone shipments. That is according to preliminary data from IDC. The report points out that Samsung sells dozens of smartphones ranging from budget models to premium $2,000 foldables, this variety and price range is what has given Samsung the number one market share annually since 2010, until now. While the smartphone market as a whole was down 3.2% in 2023 versus 2022, Apple shipments were said by IDC to be up 
3.7%. Samsung slumped in the firm's estimation, dropping 13.6% year-on-year. The IDC guesstimate puts 2023 iPhone shipments at 234.6 million units, eclipsing Samsung's 226.6 million. Speaking on the numbers... IDC's Worldwide Tracker Team Research Director Nabila Popel said, While we saw some strong growth from low-end Android players like Transian and Xiaomi in the second half of 2023, stemming from rapid growth in emerging markets, the biggest winner is clearly Apple. Not only is Apple the only player in the top three to show positive growth annually, but also bags the number one spot annually for the first time ever. Probably after the news about the Apple hardware discounts in China, and definitely before the IDC numbers were out, Evercore analyst Amit Daryanani issued a note of reassurance to investors. Anyway, that's the way Apple 3.0's Philip Elmer DeWitt seems to see it. Like Daniel Ives at Wedbush, said Elmer DeWitt, Daryanani often sees his job as calming client fears. To that end... The analyst posted five questions he's heard from investors recently, along with his answers to them. Running through those, can iPhone revenue hold up despite a more competitive Huawei? He and his think concerns around Huawei are overstated. Darianani expects iPhone revenue to remain stable. A rise for iPhone's average sales price and share gains in India should offset whatever weakness China might see. How will the non-iPhone hardware business perform? The part of the note posted by Apple 3.0 only addresses Apple Watch. On that, he still seems to be addressing only the short ban over the holiday, saying impact here should be minor, and any disruption will largely represent delayed sales rather than lost sales. Will services remain a growth driver? Yep. He and his are expecting low teens growth for services in fiscal year 24. What's the risk from various antitrust actions? Apple will continue to face antitrust risk for as long as it is among the world's largest and most dominant tech companies, according to the note. And finally, where will Apple find valuation support? While some have seen the bottom for ticker symbol AAPL between 160 and 170 bucks, Darianani and friends see the bottom between 175 and 180. Darianani has an outperformed rating on Apple's shares. His price target on the shares is 220 bucks. Apple's got an idea for Apple Watch that is absolutely biblical. You know the part that's getting it in trouble? It's reportedly making way to take that part out. The Wall Street Journal says the Cupertino company may be removing a blood oxygen sensor from some of its smartwatches to get around a patent dispute related to the technology, a step likely to avoid further sales disruptions, but one that may raise questions about the company's push into health. Will it, though, raise questions about that push into health, I mean? While it is likely that some people buy Apple Watch specifically for the blood oxygen sensor, it's hard to imagine that that is the specific reason most people buy it. Anyway, the plan to remove the blood oxygen sensor looks like a last resort for Apple, one that it does not need yet. Apple has asked for a stay on the ban of the import of Apple Watch into the U.S. while it appeals the U.S. International Trade Commission's patent infringement ruling. If it gets that stay, Apple says it'll keep selling the watch with the blood oxygen sensor intact. If it does not get that stay, that's apparently when it'll pull the ripcord. Massimo is the company whose patent Apple has been violating, according to the ITC. The journal had Massimo indicating in a filing on Monday that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency, which is responsible for enforcing import bans, on Friday approved technical changes to the watches, including the removal of the blood oxygen sensor. The piece goes on to say that that approval from the customs agency will allow the company to maintain sales of its Apple Watch even if it loses the requested stay. 
A decision on that stay is expected in the coming days. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, Coda, your all-in-one collaborative workspace. Sometimes working with a team can be tough, especially when the team isn't all together working. How do you know that everybody's got the latest info on everything they need? Coda lets you do that by bringing together the best of documents, spreadsheets, and apps into one platform. Not only will Coda stop you from jumping from app to app to app, it'll also let you communicate and collaborate on documents, roadmaps, and more instantly. You make a change, everybody sees it. You got a question or comment, throw it open to everyone just the way you would if everyone was together. I'm playing with some fun stuff on a solo project with Coda as well. Hoping to tell you more about that later this week. In the meantime, if you want a platform that empowers your startup to strategize, plan, and track goals effectively, you can get started with Coda today for free and get a $1,000 credit at coda.io slash macOSCan. That's a special limited time offer for startups, and that means you can begin planning right now at no cost. That's C-O-D-A dot I-O slash macOSCan to get started for free and get a $1,000 credit. Can't beat that price. I really dig Coda, and I think you will too. Check it out today. Coda dot I O slash Mac OS Ken. There were two big award shows over the past few days, the 2024 Critics Choice Awards on Sunday and the 2023 Emmy Awards on Monday. The Emmys were postponed due to the writers and actor strike last summer. Apple was up for a lot of awards at both ceremonies and walked away with very few. Despite being nominated in 16 categories, according to a piece from Apple Insider, Apple managed only one win at the Critics' Choice Awards. That one went to Billy Crudup, Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series, for his most recent turn in The Morning Show. It is deja vu all over again. Crudup won the same award for the same role in the same series at the 2020 Critics' Choice Awards. Apple Insider says that was actually the first award ever for Apple TV+, and props to Mr. Crudup for his consistency. On now to the Emmys, where Apple fared a bit better, I think. The Los Angeles Times says the company took home three of the TV awards, including Hamish Hamilton and Sean Carter winning directing for a variety special for the Apple Music Super Bowl 57 halftime show starring Rihanna, Best Supporting Actor in a Limited or Anthology Series or TV Movie went to Paul Walter Hauser and Blackbird, and Best Guest Actor in a Comedy Series went to Sam Richardson for his Season 3 turn in Ted Lasso. I gotta say this list is a bit confusing. While the LA Times had all of those on last night's list, we had Richardson winning a Creative Arts Emmy for that role a little over a week ago. At that same time, we also had the Apple Music Super Bowl 57 halftime show starring Rihanna taking directing for a variety special. And hey, as long as we're trying to figure out what got messed up where, I kept saying Monday that this year's Super Bowl was Super Bowl 57, That's what the article from which I was working said. This year's is actually Super Bowl 58. I beg your pardon. And finally today, as it has done for years now, Apple turned its homepage over to honoring the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on Monday. Officially called Birthday of Martin Luther King Jr., known informally as MLK Day, The U.S. federal holiday is observed on the third Monday in January, closest to King's birthday, which was actually on the 15th of January, back in 1929. 
Cult of Mac noted this year's change to the home page. On Monday, Apple.com featured a portrait of King preparing to speak in Montgomery, Alabama in 1965. That accompanied a quote from a commencement address delivered by King in 1959. Because of our involvement in humanity, we must be concerned about every human being. To that, Apple added, We honor the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and reflect on his legacy of service to all. Interestingly, Cult of Mac says Apple also offered a free download of the book, The Essential Martin Luther King Jr., I Have a Dream, and Other Great Writings on Apple Books. While true that that was available on Apple Books, the link in the piece was for Amazon, which was also giving away the book as a Kindle book. Book 9 in a series of 11. Don't know whether the book is still free as of today, but it might be worth checking out. Also following tradition, Apple CEO Tim Cook paid tribute to King on Monday, saying almost the exact same thing said on Apple's homepage. Cook posted the message, Dr. King wrote that because of our involvement in humanity, we must be concerned about every human being. Today, we celebrate his life, honor his legacy, and aspire to walk in his footsteps. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Coda. Get started for free and get a $1,000 credit at coda.io slash macOSCan. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more in that your support at patreon.com slash Mac OS Ken. Advertising handle by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time. That is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.